This is what you could see through a typical small telescope on a clear night. That's about 20, uh, how many power is that? That is about 20, hold on, I'm just going to align this just a tiny bit. That's better. I like that better to show those craters. That's really a beautiful sight. You can see a mountain range going right along there too and the, the, the uh, craters standing out quite boldly in the thing. Uh, that is, I think, about 28 power. It's not a high quality eyepiece either. It's a fairly inexpensive one. You can see the moon drifting along as the earth rotates. Uh, you saw this 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter telescope um, a few weeks ago in a video I put on YouTube when I was showing how the telescope worked when I was uh, photographing the uh, transit of Venus. This is a slightly lower power eyepiece. You could see um, some kind of a mountain or something sticking out right in the, the, just past the uh, dark edge of the moon. Now what you're seeing there with all those craters is actually the sunset light of the moon. That is where the setting or the sun rises uh, uh, on the moon itself. The moon rotates approximately once every once a month, but once every 28 days on its axis. It, but you could actually sometimes see with a telescope like this a mountain or a crater suddenly appear in the field of view, like uh, just as the the uh, sunrise hits it over the lunar horizon. If I sound a little tired tonight, I just finished a uh, large grocery shopping, so I'm pretty whipped. But uh, on the other hand, I'll try adjusting this thing a little bit, see if I can get it back in. I've... Maybe not. That's not too bad. Here it comes. Yeah, I just want to get these craters right near the edge. There it comes. That's really a beautiful view. This is spectacular, really. It's magnificent. Similar to what I had before. Slightly different power. There's the crater Clavius on the left. This is really pretty good. A lot of subtlety there. That's just really amazing to see that group of craters go through like that. Just beautiful. You can see the air turbulence moving the uh, Shimming, shimmering the image around. The moon is getting is over on my neighbor's roofs now. It's getting a little bit lower in the sky. There it goes. Okay, here comes a nice passage of the moon through. I'm not sure exactly what section I'm going to get, but all kinds of details are showing up on the moon right now. Very, very interesting. You can see a little bit of atmospheric turbulence. This should be an interesting shot. That's really quite beautiful, really. The uh, Earth's rotation is carrying the moon through the field of view. You can see bright spots. I think those, those are uh, craters all right. There's an interesting dark streak right there. I'm not sure what that is. I should be really more familiar with the moon. That is equivalent of looking through a fairly high power eyepiece right there. Now we're coming into some a lunar mountain range again. Two mountain ranges, I think, actually, by the look of them. There's those two small isolated mountains right there. That's a really, really nice view of the uh, northern edge of the, the northern part of the moon. That's really fantastic, really, a nice video of it drifting by. Very, very sharp and clear. And you can see the uh, the peaks on the moon, the isolated peaks sticking out past the Terminator. That's the uh, sunrise line of the moon. That's very interesting to see. This is a much better image than what I had with the inexpensive eyepiece. This should be very exciting to see. This is with a 10 millimeter plausal eyepiece with a camera out at quite a good zoom. This is a really nice image right here. 
Hopefully I have enough video. Oh, this is fantastic. Really, really beautiful. The turbulence seems to have abated to, the, to a large extent. This is really a beautiful view. This is with the 70 mil, seven, same 70 millimeter refractor that I used to photograph the, um, the transit of Venus with a, a few weeks ago. This is a view of the mountain range going through on the right hand side and approaching the sunset line of the moon. Here it comes. Uh, you could see uh, some mountain peaks uh, just way on the other side of the uh, sunset line just sticking up catching the light of the rising sun there's a, a little triangle of them right there sticking way out look like three little stars off the side of the moon but that's actually part of the moon this is a beautiful sight overall you're watching it drift through a very high power eyepiece right now I'll see if I can get it to uh, this is typically of what you'd see in a small amateur telescope on a nice night looking at the moon. This is a 10 millimeter Sirius Plossel eyepiece from Orion telescope and binoculars. Now I'm going to get things changed a little bit here. I'm going to have to reset the telescope a little bit. That looks pretty good. I think that's going to be fun. Get that part of the moon coming through. See if I can zoom this out just a little bit more. I can. This is very interesting. I thought I had it all the way, but I didn't. See how that works now. This should be very exciting to see. This is the equivalent of a very high power eyepiece looking visually through this thing. You can see all kinds of subtle stuff on the moon with this eyepiece. This is a really good eyepiece. You could have seen some very nice craters coming through here in a minute as the sunset line of the moon is approached. Actually, the sunrise line. You can start to see some craters now. See how this looks. You're looking at the part of the moon now that's illuminated by the sun coming down at sort of a flat angle right overhead. So you're not seeing the craters illuminated by their own shadows. Now you're starting to see that. You can see a little air turbulence there and stuff. This is almost like being in orbit around the moon. That, oh, there goes some spectacular mountains right by there. That's amazing. Beautiful craters. You could see them, the mountain peaks sticking way out past the sunset line of the moon. Now some turbulence is coming up again. That is very inter interesting indeed. I'll see if I can get some more close-ups like that. Let's move the camera into position. I think I'm still recording here. There it comes. I can see flashes of light. It means the moon is entering just about where I want it to. That's not bad at all, really. No, that's pretty good. Uh, you see the edge of the moon coming up. That's a quite a like considerably high power, like right? because the uh, zoom lens of the camera I think is all the way out. It's magnifying things quite a bit. You can see the moon really drifting through. Those markings there that are kind of subtle are craters that are not near the edge of the moon. So the sunlight is hitting those more or less directly and the shadows of the craters are not making them very visible. But as you can see, as the terminator, the edge of the moon near the sunset line approaches, the craters are going to get a little bit more easy to see. Things are You could see some uh, craters and mountains there. In a minute I'll drift over maybe and try and show you a mountain range. That is what you see through a high power eyepiece generally on the moon with a small telescope. You can see a little bit of air turbulence there, a little bit of shimmering of the image because of uh, turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere. But once again, this is, this is the same 70 millimeter telescope that I uh, used on the transit of Venus a few weeks ago. Now you can see that the craters are becoming more prominent. They're getting nearer and nearer, closer and closer. We're getting closer and closer to the sunset line of the moon as the uh, Earth is rotating the moon into the field. Now you're seeing a few craters getting even more prominent as it, we're approaching the sunset line. This is very, a very intriguing sight. And there's that little jut of mountains that is going right out past the sunset line of the moon. This is really a very good video on my, on my uh, video screen of the camera. This is very interesting. Sometimes those mountain peaks just appear in a matter of minutes. The very, very tip of a peak will appear as you're actually watching the thing through a telescope. Now what I'm going to uh, do is just raise this up a little bit. Telescope, I think, overall. There's the mountain range right there.
hold on. Maybe I can just swivel the telescope a tiny amount. Oh, there's a peak standing out right there. That's worth looking at. That's what I was telling you about. There's a couple of peaks on the left standing out just as the sun is rising on them. There's one on the right. And there's a really nice crater in bold relief. You see the two flickering peaks there? That's really an amazing thing to see. There's another little one, tiny one there, I think. Now I'll change the position of this again. You'll see these things drift through again. I think, nope, the moon is in the clear now. This is going to be a really good sight coming up now. You'll see these craters really decently, I think. Very, very nice, really. Yeah, here they come. This is a spectacular view. You can see the chromatic aberration in the eyepiece and the telescope, that blue fringe. It's a very simple telescope. This is a really beautiful sight right now. You can see the Earth's turbulent atmosphere making the thing shimmer a little bit. This is a really beautiful sight. Believe it or not, there's a computer, a mosquito right on my uh, the screen of my camera. That is really an amazing sight. Now I'm going to shift things around and see if I can show you the mountain range I was promising to show you. I think this will probably do it. I think this will get the mountain range pretty well. You can see some of the uh, dark areas of the moon that are well away from the uh, sunset line on the moon, or actually the sunrise line now. This is pretty good overall. Actually, I'm going to be showing you eventually how to use an equatorial mount uh, with a telescope and a clock drive. What that'll do, it'll keep the image steady like in one, in one direction. Here come some mountains right now. Here's the mountain range I was telling you about. I'll have to look it up on the chart to see which one it is, but it's really quite beautiful. You can see the mountain range and some craters drifting through the field of view right now. This is the equivalent of probably at least a 100 power eyepiece. But you're seeing something very fascinating right now, a long string of mountains. There's a sunrise line on the moon right there. You can see one tiny little peak, some kind of peak, uh, like a little just sticking out slightly past the sunset line. That's a really beautiful sight. There's a couple of isolated mountain peaks on the upper right. And there's one, there's one sticking out there too. I think I sh we saw that before. Maybe not. This should about do it, I think. That's really beautiful right there. Oh, that's the Alpine Gorge right there. That little streak that looks like a little notch in the moon. Like a little trench dug out. There's the crater I was telling you about drifting in. That's a really beautiful view. That's really amazing for a small inexpensive telescope. See a nice complex of craters to the right of it. I think that's the crater Plato, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. I don't look at the moon too terribly often. I mostly look at deep sky objects, which are galaxies, star clusters, things like that. That's a really pretty good view. I'll see if I can give you a view of the uh, north end of the moon in a minute. Here it comes. This is a really good view. You can see the turbulence wiggling the edge of the moon. You can see the craters right at the north edge of the moon. There they come. You can see the air turbulence is fairly pronounced there. You can see everything wiggling around with the Earth's atmosphere blurring it out a little bit, which happens most of the nights you view the moon or planets that usually happens, but not always. Once in a while, the Earth's atmosphere is very steady and you can get some really clear views. That's pretty good. That's the equivalent of looking through a very high power eyepiece with this telescope. I think I'll try and get the mountain range in there again.